Well, that's a good shot to open on. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one, in case you didn't play the first one. We're back to uh, pretentious plays. I am the Scribner. This is my pal, Jay Durham. Hi. Jay Durham has chosen to play uh, the Capcom classic Resident Evil, or, or Biohazard. Biohazard 2. Biohazard 2 for the uh, Sony PlayStation 1 video game console. Due to the location of the screen we're looking at, I have uh, reframed it to where you can see my outdated cabinets. My apartment is... I like my apartment, but those cabinets... Yeah. 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 No, they're not great. The rest of it looks fine. So anyway, Jay Derm will be piloting. I'll be uh, drinking my uh, first pumpkin spice latte of the, of the new season. Good one. Yeah. Jay Derm is a former uh, Starbucks employee. Yeah. So longest two years of my life. The, the PSL doesn't do for him what it does for me. No. It is. Yeah. It doesn't work for me. All right, so, Jader, why don't you, this is, uh, I guess we should, in case you haven't seen any of the other installments, Pretentious Play is, uh, it's like a Let's Play, but we talk down to you. Yeah. Basically. Which is weird, because based on how this framing goes, we're going to be looking up. Right, yeah. But, but don't let that confuse you. We'll Use still, your imagination. Yeah, we'll still be talking down to you, even though we're looking up, um, which is pretty meta. So, tell us why you've chosen uh, Resident Evil 2 as your, as uh, this week's adventure. Um, mainly because I grew up playing these games. I was a big fan. They were like the only games I played for a long time. Sure. Um, haven't played them in years. This one's probably about 10 or 11 years for me. And I'm curious to see how it holds up. Yeah. Um, this one's always kind of regarded as maybe the best one um, of the original PS1 version. Yeah, that's an important addendum. Yeah, because obviously um, the remake would probably be the best. But, um... Yeah, so I'm curious to see how it holds up. We're playing as Leon. Um, Leon S. Kennedy. Mainly because I couldn't find the Claire disc. I am a Claire fan. I always played the Claire scenario. So I don't want to say I'm disappointed because I, I really couldn't care less. Mm -hmm. However, uh, if I had to choose between Claire or Leon, I definitely think Claire is the... Claire's storyline is definitely the A scenario of this game. I think it's actually cool, though, uh, for a game as old as this one is. Uh, that it has two scenarios. Like, yeah. that in of itself, coming on two discs, is sort of... That's a feature they didn't need to have, because the first one was successful enough. I feel like this one would have succeeded anyway. Yeah. But it's kind of neat. Yeah. Why not? And they decided to do this thing that they called zapping, which, I mean, was kind of a gimmick. It was kind of the blast processing of Capcom. But okay. Basically, like, if you beat the game as Leon, then you play as Claire. You get Claire's B scenario. Sure. Which is linked to Leon's A scenario and vice versa. Oh, okay. Um, the B scenario is a little different because instead of fighting William Birkin, you fight kind of a nemesis prototype named Mr. X. Okay. Um, you visit to different parts of the plate, the police station, and it's kind of structured a little differently. So this game's got a lot to offer for its time. It does, yeah, because you basically, you effectively get four games. I mean, if you want to sure. be as specific. Really it's two, but... Yeah. Um, imagine, uh, imagine if this was made today. I feel like you would play as Claire, and then they would sell you the other three options for fourteen ninety nine each. Yeah, exactly. I feel like that's what would happen. And I mean, the Leon and Claire scenarios are actually really, um, really different enough to make it feel like you're not just playing the same game with a different character. Um, yeah, I agree. You, you I agree. visit different characters; the plot plays out differently. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as I understand, like, the canon kind of runs that, like, Claire and Sherry fight Birkin. Okay. Which would be her A scenario, and Leon and Ada fight Mr. X in his B scenario. Um, that's kind of how the lore shook out. Fair um, enough. According to, uh, you know, lore guys on Game Facts and stuff. Yeah, the RE wiki. Right, that always cracked me up. That's a funny he, uh, exit effect there for that zone. Yeah, because he definitely would not... It was like very cartoonish. He just like yeah ends up. It's kind of Bollywood looking. It is. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, for a PS One game, this is. Uh, yeah, I remember being like taken by this as a kid, just this. thinking how good it looked. Yeah. Um, and like I'm semi intrigued like now. I mean, I know this game. I know what's happening. I've seen all this before. But uh, you know, I'm finding it difficult to take my eyes away from the action. Yeah, I mean, this was a big deal too because it was the first survival horror game that wasn't strictly set in one location, I guess. I mean, oh, sure, the, sure. The police station kind of acts Good as the call. mansion. Yeah. But, I mean, this taking place in the entire city, effectively, was a big deal. Um, That's cool how they set that up, where they're on opposite sides of the burning. To yeah, go. it works out a lot better. What than the hell happened to the series? Yeah, it works good out God. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I never even played the set for. Um, Ugh. Yeah, so this is the part where I try to 
manage the tank controls. Okay, yeah, tank controls. So we don't know how this is going to go. Yeah, probably not great, as you can see right now. Um, I'm already <laughs> attacked twice. It is survival horror. It is. Um, I'm definitely not going to be attacking them just for a minute. In the, in the business of ammo conservation. I feel like if you can just get to the uh, the police station, yeah, that's usually the ammo, right? Like, if you can get there, it's things sort of mellow out. You can set the pace from there. The classic door opening, loading screen. Oh, yeah. And so that Here one. we meet Robert Kendo. Leon is... I haven't... Like, when I think of Leon, I think of RE4 Leon. Yeah. I guess because I'm an optimist, when I think of Resident Evil, I think of Resident Evil 4 in general. Yeah, but, probably um, a good way to think of it. <laughs> but, um... I don't know. I've, like, I feel like it's been so long since I've played these first few that my inclination is sort of to talk about RE4 like it's good and the rest of them are crap. Yeah. But having seen this, I still think this is far better than modern Resident Evil games. So maybe oh, you got absolutely. 4. Yeah. Then you got, like, maybe... Two, three, like I don't. One's not bad for its time either. No, Although it is, really well. it's semi damning that this one and one are on the same console. Yeah, it is. Because a lot of the forgiveness you have for games, uh, especially that are older, are like, well, it was on this console or it was on this console. It's it's sort of hard to believe they're on the same console. This is the part where Robert Kendo gets eaten. Um, I, I remember my aunt. I, I first played this game at my grandmother's house. I was I don't know how old I was. Probably early teens. And I thought I could get a shotgun. I can't remember if you can or not. I'm pretty sure you can, but... He's got a gun store. You ought to be able to just clean up. I know, you'd think so, but the rules are survival horror, you know. Yeah. You can only get what's, not, what's yeah. not pre rendered. Yeah, it's, oh, that's true. run through. Uh, in Claire's scenario, he has a, bow, a crossbow instead uh, than a shotgun. Which why? I don't understand, I don't yeah, understand just why. Because Claire, gets a, all, Claire never gets a shotgun. Ultimate Leon universe. Gets a crossbow. Fair um, enough. Well, I mean, it's, it's cool that they ID, ID each... Uh, Scenario, even by little things that, yeah, it doesn't have to make sense. Right. My aunt came in while I was playing this, though, uh, and I was really enjoying it. And she watched uh, the horrific, obviously very realistic violence taking place, and uh, said, and I quote, "No wonder people do such stupid shit." Wow. Yeah. There you go. So she's an early adopter of the video games or. Why the world is bad. I know I said I wasn't going to be attacking these zombies, but that part was kind of necessary. Um, but it's okay because <laughs> I always like the like just the aesthetic of the city. Um, yeah, they establish it really well as already going to hell. I agree with them. One thing I never thought about until I got older, though, is this is supposed to be Leon's first day on the job. Oh, that's true. I don't really know why. He, oh yeah, that's another annoying mechanic. You can't reload. Um, like you have to reload on the you have to reload UI on the main screen, screen okay. which I think is a little you know dated. But and you also have to do it. You know you have to do an animation to go up the stairs. But anyway, when I got older, I realized it was kind of silly that it's Leon's first day, but he is like from out of town. Okay. I mean like he's a transfer or something. Yeah, like I mean he's he's driving in from another city. On his first day, like you think he would have like found a place to live first, maybe, or like <laughs> you know, because it's, it's implied that he came from like a, way, a ways away. Cause sure. He has no idea. Yeah. This is interesting. It's one of the first female zombies in the series. Um, oh, I didn't realize that. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, gender. Yeah. Exactly. Aggressive gender. Yeah, exactly. That's a lot of talk about that right now. Yeah, this one gives you the fair shake. You do the male and female. Yeah. Zombies. Um, that's really, I remember finding that really gross when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, this part actually used to scare me quite a bit. I remember when I first saw this game, I was at a birthday party, and <laughs> my friend's older brother, he had just bought it, and we were all playing it, we were all being cool kids because our parents didn't know. Yeah. And one of them was like, we need to turn the lights off. And mm. I was too freaked out, I couldn't, I couldn't take it. Um, I'm going to punt, uh, crush your head. I thought I was going to punt it, but... I couldn't take it. I got really mad and uh, made him turn the lights back on because I was a baby. Well, we're playing um, during the day here, so that should help you a little. Yeah, this was pre-Silent Hill. This was pre-anything like that. Yeah, um, this was as scary as it got back Right, then. yeah. Mist, um, Mist was the the survival horror. This before scared this. me a lot when I was a kid. <laughs> it was always a little too, like... I mean, it's that old cliche of, like, the unknown is scarier or whatever, but that actually yeah. holds true for that because I was always afraid that, like, something was going to happen because it was so quiet. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm in caution now because I've been attacked too many times because I'm a bozo. Um, You're doing great. But there are some herbs out in front of the police station, if I remember. Yeah. It's interesting that to me, still to this day, that they still rely on herbs yeah. for this series. Like, why why not just a Band-Aid? Like, what is the... Why herbs? Yeah, I don't know. It's got, like, the mix and match sort of thing, like, where you can mix green yeah, and... Yeah, you got the green and red to make yeah, it Yeah, like, who cares? Like, I never really understood what they did <laughs> with it, because, like... I mean, the implication is... Either, like, it looks they, like a potato plant. I mean, I guess they eat them, but or they, I'd like to see that in cutscene form, like a quick little yeah, scene. Yeah, I was I was wanting to see that vegging too. out like a damn rabbit. But also, I guess when you combine them, they're like they're they're mashed up on like as like a paste on a piece of paper. Sure. So maybe they apply it like as a bandage, like an aloe type deal. I don't know, but who can say? Yeah, Capcom's too busy reinventing the wheel with the story. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's. Uh, Let's go ahead and get that elephant out of the room. Capcom can't write a damn game. Like, no. the, the dialogue... If Bioware is sort of the cutting edge of well-rounded video game writing, Capcom... Capcom's, like, uh, games are sort of stuck in first draft hell. And I feel like the it really wouldn't be that big a deal, like, even as old as this game is. Um, because, you know, video games are still evolving, they're still maturing, and, you know, they're, they're still doing that, but, like... It amazes me that they really haven't gotten any better at it. Like, their games today really are not that much better, if at all, than this one. Yeah. And since we've approached this, we'll, we'll move on to this. Typewriters to save. Yeah, the typewriters are a little That's strange. no good. No, like, you, Yeah, you can't be doing that. It also is a little, like, it really dates the game, the fact that you have to have a pink ribbon. Like, yes. You have to have a specific That's bad. before you can say That's yeah, bad. That's bad. Because then you're in the, you end up stuck with it. Um, like you're like as a child playing this as like twelve, fifteen, I and mean, whatever the hell we were, having uh, having to go to you know shopping with mom or whatever. Like she was already letting you play this like violent, gory thing that the cover said right. seventeen plus year olds were supposed to be playing. But when the fact that like you couldn't just save the damn game right. until you like explored more, like it put you in this pinch that was just miserable. So this is an intro to his coworker Kenneth. Ah, Kenneth. Kenneth's had a rough one. Who he is supposed to, like, he acts like he knows, but it's like his first day, so I don't know how he would. When did your suspension of disbelief crack on this series? Um, five. Okay. Yeah, definitely five. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Like, maybe that's one of the things that makes Silent Hill 2 so great, is that it operates in an intangible universe. Yeah. It's a very psychological game. And I'm almost starting to think that Resident Evil games are Silent Hill, and like these adventures, these idiots keep having to go on that all include this virus and whatnot. Are like either this is hell, like either Leon's been dead for years, right. and this whole gang's been dead for years, and this is hell reliving these, this same crisis, or they are the single most unlucky individuals in the history of the world. True, because yeah. they keep dumping the same protagonists into these same scenarios, and it's just like, you know, four I bought it. Four new was I don't know. Let's let's talk about that. Like, obviously mechanically it's very good. Uh, big over the shoulder view pioneering, which is now a huge thing in games. Yeah. Resident Evil Four, but why does Resident Evil Four succeed, whereas the ones after it failed? Uh, he points the gun at me because he wants me to go so badly. Oh, um, well, that's drama. Drama. That's yeah. drama. He told us that Umbrella is behind it. Um, I don't know how he knows that, but yeah, this is well known in the town. But yeah, I don't know. I think for they still tried to implement some horror aspects. Um, I yeah, think it was still a new enough concept that he just locked us out. Yeah, like a dick bastard. That's all right. We'll come back later and he'll be quite dead. But um. Yeah, 4 definitely tried to implement some of the horror elements as much as they could with that viewpoint. I mean, one yeah. of the keys of this series is, like, the fixed camera. Fixed camera is very which, important. You know, it's allows, a horror game. Yeah, allows for scary sequences, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, 5, I just remember not being, not feeling threatened at all. Yeah. Mainly because Chris became this, like, hulking, you know, muscle man. Yeah. Who could punch boulders out of the way? He's very Marcus Felix. Like he he's is. just it was the part roids. where he punches the boulder like just absolutely baffled me. Yeah, story. yeah, it's just um, and the plot just started getting so ridiculous with you know Wesker being a super soldier, which I mean started in Code Veronica. Why does the super soldier trope prove like 
X Files did it. It's like yeah. you just can't get anywhere in these like horror fiction universes without eventually stumbling. That's like the death knell. That's like where the heart monitor shuts off is when the super soldier plot element gets introduced because no, they they do it every time. Oh, it's painful. Every time you hear the word super soldier in an X-Files episode, obviously toward the end, it just you're like, well, this is the beginning of the end. Yeah. So this is the item box system, also a really outdated concept. Um, yeah. It's a universal item box. Um, we were talking about the ink rooms being really frustrating. It's kind of nice because they'll typically give you an item box with the save room, so you can just use the ink room and drop it in the item box and be done with it. Yeah. But then that kind of begs the question, like, why bother? Um, do you want to do the dramatic reading of the files? Uh, I'll try. Okay. I'll see what we have. This is a police memorandum. No, I don't want to. Okay, Nobody well, wants to read these. Anyway, so um, this basically just tells us where. Like, this is like is. this is background lore. It is. This is yeah. like Skyrim. It is. Yeah, yeah basically, the Skyrim of this day. This is so, pretty much Dragon Age. Two two three six. That is the. Two two three six. Do I need to write that down? Is, um, safe. No, I can always refer back to it. It's in the okay. file. Uh, oh, that's right. You get it. File deals. Um, well, that's not challenging. So yeah, this is like I remember being really surprised by this game too because I mean the police station is I mean it's obviously not. There's the first liquor, liquor, which I think is done really well. That's very clever. Um, it's a nice little. Uh, yeah. Um, they have a cutscene where they put the camera so far down its throat that. Yeah, the police station is obviously really um, asinine. It's a good camera. Good fixed camera. Yeah, that's good. That's, good. that's, that's how, good. That's how you do it properly. I like that. And they're not even giving it back to you. Yeah, it never gives it back to you. Even if, what if you go back through and come back out? Um, I don't know. Let's see. I inquiring yeah. minds wants to know. Yeah, the police station is obviously an asinine design. No police station would have these nuts and bolts and traps and stuff that it has. But I like it because it differs enough for the mansion. I like that it adds to the camp. It I think does, Resident yeah. Evil succeeds when it's being campy. No, it never go as fuck. I guess this was at the liquor's point of view. Yeah, um, that's kind of. And cool. he's moved. Yeah. Um, there so yeah, it's like a, it's just, it's a really cool environment. They did it really well. Um, yeah. I haven't played Resident Evil 1.5, but I've heard about it. Um, what a ludicrous name for a game. Yeah, well, it, it was originally Resident Evil 2, sure. and it got, um... So, yeah, okay, this is a little bit more liquor, you know, twist this guy's head off. Yeah. That's kind of, like, a shocker. Um, you come upon the blood, eerily on the plastic man. That's such a cool... Liquor is a pretty cool design. Yeah. It's also... This is also pretty well paced. It is. Like, you, uh, you had the initial, like... Right into the action, you had time to catch your breath. It's about time for you to experience something uh, uncomfortable. Again. Yeah, and it's interesting too because um, hold on, let me. There's a spade key. We'll talk about that in a little while. You just did here. Um, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm getting close. Danger, Will Robinson. So I've definitely fucked up <laughs> by getting hit by him. There's a green herb though, so oh. you'll never get it. Yeah. Okay, well, he decided that, that pre-rendered background was nothing special. Um, you died. I like you are. Is it you are? Is it you are dead? Or is it always you died? It differs. Catherine's you are dead, and I think that's what I'm thinking. I think Silent Hills you are dead as well. Really? I don't remember the first. I played a lot of the second one, obviously. Anyway, so um, get back to the fray. Yeah, I'll get back in it. Um, <laughs> Shake it off. <laughs> I don't actually remember what I was saying. The Leon. What a stupid name. I forgot what you were saying as well. Oh. Basically, it's like the police stations are really cool. Um, are we still really cool in cool Well, yeah. I mean. It was, it was good enough that they decided to re revisit in the third one. Oh, Resident Evil 1.5. So yes, there we are. It was this long fabled, um, I guess, demo version, beta version of Resident Evil 2, where it took place in the police station. But it was a lot more like a normal police station. Um, Claire wasn't in it. It was some biker girl named Eliza who was wearing like a motocross outfit. Um, it was never finished for whatever reason. I think the original director. Not Mikami, but the guy who was behind it. He left or something, and they basically redesigned it from the ground up. And that demo or beta just leaked on the internet a few years ago. People have made, you know, ROMs of it and such. Um, apparently, it's not very good. Um, As unfinished things tend to tend to be. Yeah, because the police station just felt like a. I mean, people joke about how like ridiculous the, the police station is in this game. Yeah, but like. And they're right. Yeah, it's, they're right. But like the gothic, you know, spade keys and switches and yeah, gold, like, it kind of adds to it. Yeah, this is unskippable. 
As we're finding out. Yeah, as we're finding out. Um, Thanks, Ink Ribbon. Yeah, seriously. Clearly it's your fault for saving too soon. Yeah. That's the problem. His line reading is always hilarious to me. I mean, he sounds like he is trying so hard to give this, like, Shakespearean performance. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's reading Capcom written lines. Yeah, exactly. And knowing their history as voice actors, he was probably just the guy from the office that was walking by. Um, and they were just like, hey, do you want to do this guy's voice? I think this series, as long as the level design is good, the series holds up. I think that's maybe what's going on. Yeah. Five's co-op mechanics are obviously terrible. Yeah, the the co-op co shit needs to stop. Like, if you're a game developer and you're making a horror-oriented game, because, like, Fear 3 did it, you know what's not scary? You know what's 100% not scary? Being on Facebook. Yeah. You know what's not scary? Like, being in a room with somebody else, whatever. Like, part of the appeal of horror is that you're alone. Yeah. When you not introduce co-op elements... Like, it's, it's like introducing sex into a game where your goal is to become a nun. Like, it's just the, you're just missing the entire point. So stop it. So five, yeah, five did that. It was bad. Yeah. And the AI co-op was bad. So even if you weren't playing with somebody else, you almost wish you were because the AI was so stupid. And that was another problem. Like, um, it, like the co-op for me, I'm going to go ahead and say it again, even though, like... Oh, are you burning the increment? Well, I mean, yeah, I think you should. I don't want to have to see the guy. Yeah, in I this mean, format, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the game screws you because it registers your like hour or the hours it takes you to get through it and it grades you like a typical Capcom Japanese game <laughs> where it gives you a grade at the end. And one of the shames you for yeah, one of the determining factors is how many times you save. But luckily it's not like Silent Hill where it gives you a different ending. It just kinda gives you a grade. So if you're that kind of person that believes in like knowing your blood type and stuff like that, then I guess <laughs> they're big on blood type. they are big on blood type. Yeah that's the thing you know, naturally. But that's how um, I do it. Anyway, so yeah, the memo and blah blah blah. You know. Does it change? No, no it okay. doesn't change. Does it ever change? No. Oh, okay. I'm surprised I didn't actually just know that by heart. But, um, yeah, I don't like five for me. With the co-op was just unplayable. I mean, the AI was so bad. Yeah, it was, it was painful. So then I played it online and beat it in about four hours, which oh, highlights oh, the problem. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> here it is again. So, um, it kind of highlights the problem where it's like either. It's hard because the AI is fucking you up, or you play it with somebody and it's just too easy. Yeah. Um, and it makes even less sense than the other games. Yeah, absolutely. Because and, and obviously, like I don't, it's we we've, we've shamed the game enough, and this was a when it came out was a popular thing. But let's not forget that it's complete racial insensitivity was absolutely embarrassing. Yeah, it was. I can say that. Um, Sadly, that may have been the least of its problems. Yeah. But Ed 6 was I mean, the, the most homogenized thing I've ever seen. This series went to crap. Yeah, my problem with it, too, is just the fact that, like... That went better. That went better. It did go better. <laughs> like, the, the original, like, storyline, the original lore, I mean, you can kind of excuse it because it all kind of... It's all internally consistent. Yeah. Oh, this is a good moment here. Um, this is the window... Like bash out of the window on you or something. I guess it doesn't actually happen right now. It happens when I come back through, I think. Which is also clever. It is. Yeah. You're because it's also like a reversal of the uh, dog scare from the first game. Yes. Um, oh no. It's just the meeting room. This is like the driving class. If you like pass a school bus, you have to come here and... Yeah, pretty much. So yeah. these people are like the only ones that are better off dead. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. You know, I think this is the briefing room. It's like a briefing room. Oh, okay. But, um, so this is where they come in, and the chief's like, all right, I want this closed up today. Yeah, exactly. I'm running for DA next month. and So this painting um, is actually kind of creepy. Um, Why is it there, though? Like, that would never actually be there. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that highlights the whole police section. I mean, Chief Irons, it's kind of implied that he's, like, a fucking freak. Um, he's, sure. He's very strange. Yeah. Um, not, that we're, not that we're judging him. Not that we're, yeah, yeah no judgment. Um, never mind the fact that he is apparently, in one of the scenes, he's eating a girl. There seems to be. There's a girl on his desk with her stomach cut open, and he's just kind of sitting there with her. Yeah, um, and you're just like, fair enough. Yeah, you kind of just go with it. But anyway, back to my point. Like the original <laughs> series, I guess pre four, like, it was ridiculous, but it was internally consistent yes. because you had like umbrella, you had the T virus, you had the G virus, and like you could kind of make amends for it because it was all this kind of one idea. Yeah. But as soon as you start introducing other concepts to add on to that, then it kind of falls apart because like, when you have the Ouroboros and the, you know, all this other stuff, it kind of gets a little ridiculous. Um, I'm getting absolutely savaged right now. Ooh, the 3-4. Yeah, That's three, brutal. Three one. Um, 
Sorry, I'm only caution. I need to get these green herbs though. That's why I came down here. There's also a save room. Um, the save rooms are always really fun in these games too because they. Um, I'm use one of these right now. They always indicate. Like they're always just really like relaxing. I love the music. The soundtrack oh, in these yeah. games are really well done. Um, I still delight in Resident Evil 4's typewriter music. Yeah. That save music's like oh, or the like the the merchant like the merchant areas yeah. where you get that. Um, like I would argue this probably has the best save music. music. Um, this is the special costumes key. So after you beat the game, oh, you nice. unlock special costumes. Um, Which are always fun. Yeah, I think it's cool. Room. It's cool. Yeah, I think I can't remember what Leon's is. Um, you can do all the film here. That's cool. That's helpful. It's a GTK. Good to know. Um, I would hate to have this office though. It looks a little like stuffy. This is where they put like a guy who screwed up. Like they, this is where you get demoted. Like you, yeah, see, this, no is where, window. this is where one of the problems comes in with this game, where it's like if I had an ink ribbon, I could use that, but obviously I don't. Um, this here is detailing. It just seems unfair. Yeah. Uh, As details, you know, the, the the outbreak, and there's apparently a sewage disposal plant. But of course there yeah, is. Yeah, of course. And it all happens to be under the police station, because no matter how big the city is, it, yeah. you know. Enough, enough with the sewer levels, developers. Yeah, Stop this, it. this does have one of the better sewer levels, I would argue. But it's still a sewer level. Before I forget, um... For those of you who are in the speedrun community or enjoy speedruns, uh, a gentleman, um, I know he's from the UK. I don't know where exactly in the UK he's from. Um, goes by the name, uh, handle uh, Arcadia Skies. As far as I know, he is the world record holder for many Resident Evil titles, and he's very, very good at beating this game very quickly. So, do yourself a Which favor. I'm not. If you enjoy, yeah. yeah, he'd be done by now. Yeah. If you enjoy uh, speed runs in Resident Evil, definitely check out Arcadia Skies. He's a, he's a, a stand up gentleman. Um, so, yeah, we are on the second floor now. You can kind of see how it's just absolutely ridiculous um, that a PlayStation would look like this. Here's one of the first puzzles um, that I'll probably never forget how to do. You say that now. Yeah. Um, I believe. Yeah, it's like it's like baby's first Resident Evil puzzle. It's a pushing <laughs> puzzle, of course. Um, yeah, this is lunacy. Well, trying to get used to the controls again. Yeah. Up the other Um There was a rumor in EGM, EGM Electronic Game Monthly used to do an April Fool's joke every year, and I think the year after this came out, there was one that if you did something or other, up until this point, I can't remember what it was. And you came in this room and you clicked on one of the statues or something, you could unlock Akuma from Street Fighter. <laughs> you could play as him, and they had a picture that was like, you know, photoshopped or whatever. And as a kid, I definitely believed it, and I spent way too long trying to get Akuma in this game. That's sad. I don't know why. I mean, they basically said, like, you could use his Hadoukens and such, and it would be the most powerful thing ever. That's like, the, that's like the SNES uh, Mortal Kombat blood code. Yeah, like, exactly. Just nothing but hearsay and rumor. So, like, this, I mean, this, this right here, like, why would this be a thing? I mean, yeah. Why would there be panels in order to release the gym? And why would I mean why would nobody ask that question? Like why is this yeah. here? Because of course. Yeah, of course. Not. Um, yeah, it's uh it's unusual. Like I would say I don't know, like I would say that the intent behind it like it's it's one of two things. A it's either the more likely answer is that it was still Capcom was not progressive enough progressive thinking enough to make this not video gamey. Right. For lack of a better word. And the other one, the other uh, answer, which I think is less likely, is it was an attempt to create sort of an unsettling, confusing environment, even if it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I definitely but I don't agree think with it. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's got character. It's, it does, uh, yeah, yeah, you know. I mean, that's what the series is, at this point, was sort of known for. Yeah. I'm definitely not one to... Uh, Ooh, Les Paul? Yeah, definitely not one to like pick apart the series, like... For real, yeah, you're yeah, you're, like, yeah, you're playing the wrong game if that's what you're doing. Yeah, so we're in the stars office now. Um, this is a really cool throwback because up until this point, I mean, it's not really there hasn't been much of a connection to the first game outside the intro cinematic talking about um, what happened in the first game. Interestingly enough, the timeline of the series, the first game only happened about five days before this happened. Okay. And Resident Evil Nemesis takes place the day before this and the day after. So wild. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Like, Jill is unconscious in like the second half of the game for one part. 
And that's implied this all takes place during that. And then when she wakes up, it's on the other end of this. Okay. Um, this is, I think, Chris's notebook. Yeah, Chris's diary. He just basically talks about... Um, Doing pull-ups. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I was wrong. So the, the mansion incident was on a few days before this. I forgot. It was a month before. But anyway. Um, close. Is that still close in proximity? Yeah, so basically it, it hints at actually something that ended up happening a long time after. But, like, it shows that Chris and Jill and Barry ended up forming some kind of task force and going after... Umbrella, I guess. They I can't umbrella, decide I if I feel like this is clever world building or lazy exposition. I really can't. I always liked it. Yeah. Because, like, being that it's kind of a tenuous sequel. Here's Claire. Hey, yeah. Claire. Let's see what they have to say. These two lovebirds. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah, it's good. Like, adjusted for technology, I would say Capcom's writing today is worse than this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The rail... Do you ever play the rail shooters? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're bad. wow. They're criminal. Not great. We should tag team those at some point. I agree. Yeah, they're on. They were on PSN at one point. I got them for free. Good. Well, we PlayStation Plus. Plug. We do that, yeah. I had placed the PSN... PS Plus game this month is PlayStation All-Stars. Yeah, I'm just gag. Yeah. yeah. Like, if... I had walked into a GameStop and they had handed me that game for free. I would have been disappointed. Yeah, like when so. it came out, like you don't have any mascots, Sony. That's stupid. The Cole twice. Yeah, Cole twice. Yeah. Cool. Claire can't leave what's happened to the city. You mentioned everybody been seen before. Um, <laughs> God, that's good writing. So yeah, Claire, obviously Chris's sister, um, and that kind of establishes that with the whole him writing about her in his diary. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, about the world building thing, I like it because, um, I mean, obviously it's set up for the future with them, like, for this task force, but, like, even, to know that it was going on so early, Yeah. it kind of, you know, oh, Chris was apparently a master marksman. I always really liked this as a kid, just because it, it really does show, like, that there is a world to this. I, I like how investigative it is. Yeah, I always like this a lot. I mean, this is the original Star Wars game, Bravo and Alpha Team. See, like, that's really good, like, for a game to... I feel like Resident Evil is now trying too hard to be dependent on... That's one of the things 4 did, is they understood when it was time to move on to something else. Right. And what's part of made it so great. But, like, like that thing, for anybody who's played the first one, it's, like, sweet. This yeah, is a like cool Easter egg. Yeah. But at the same time, the game isn't ha doesn't have its meat hooks in the first one. It's not dependent on the first one. You could pop this game in, enjoy it for what it is. It's really funny. Makes you interested in it. It's, it's kind of <laughs> interesting that they would throw that in there. I mean, I don't know why. What? That must have been a translation thing. That I mean, had to have been. Because, I mean, truly to God, to Capcom and Japan would not put that in. There's a funny Easter egg in here. This is Wesker's desk. Um, if you search it 50 times... 50? 50 times. What a royal waste of time. Yeah, you get a picture of Rebecca Chambers from the first game in a basketball outfit. Well, how many... You're like 10 deep. We have to do I'm this. I'm like 15. Yeah. Okay, we have to... That's not that bad. Yeah, so... I mean, it's um, an Easter... All right, I accept. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a decent one. That's, that's a nudge. I didn't know about it for the longest time, so I was kind of tickled when I found out. Yeah, it. this is sort of... Uh, this has a lot more novelty in the pre-game facts era. Yeah. Also, like... Another thing I like about this world building, I have the stars office in here, is like... It could very, especially at this time, like a lot of sequels were coming out that were just kind of like very tenuously related to the first ones. Yeah. And this one, like, it does something new, but also ties it into something yeah. old. So, like, it's a lot of. It's sort of the best of both worlds. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't sort of just fillet the. Uh... So, yeah, here's the film. Wow. Oh, you can go back and develop it? Yeah, go back and develop it wow. in the dark room, and, um, which I'll probably do after this. Um, just to get it out of my inventory. I mean, it's not really worth it. It's just a picture of Rebecca in a basketball outfit, but it's kind of funny that it's so worth it. It was on Wesker's desk. It's so worth um, it. He's kind of a creep, I guess. I'll let my dog in. Hear them shambling. Milton the dog has joined the fray. <laughs> <clears throat> See, Leon's still stumbling around because I suck at this game. Um, I didn't use to, though, I promise. I think you're doing. I, you're you've already exceeded my expectations. I thought this was going to be us talking over you getting mauled by the blown up crash site yeah. for like thirty minutes. I'm just surprised I remember as much of this game as I do, just because I haven't played. You this have game. not played this. He had no warm up. This is all. Yeah, this is all fresh. This yeah. Is, this is. This I'm, I'm I'm impressed. Um, 
That was a yeah. poor dodge. Yeah, my dodging skills are not great. That was a bad shoot. Ooh, he hit the ground, though. Yeah, he did. Is that variance? Does he hit the ground randomly, or is it actually like something you did? Because um, I feel I like his AI behavior on these zombies is actually fairly random. I feel like it's actually pretty random. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know like, people are going to hate for doing this, but I'm going to go ahead and use the first phase right now. Nobody cares. Just because, yeah. Like, this is academic. That's true. Yeah, this is not a test. This is not a demonstration of skill. This is us... Bullshitting about a game that I've played for years. <laughs> um, this is pretentious play. This is us analyzing the finer points of Resident Evil symbolism, and that looks ridiculous. Yeah, I so, did not anticipate that looking. Yep. Yeah. That is she. Oh my god! That is, the that is grotesque. What is wrong with her left arm? I don't really know. That's she horrifying. Really hasn't played basketball very much. I I don't even know what to say to that. Yeah, it's. That's actually the most disturbing thing this game has shown us. Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty upsetting. Good. So now we have that. That's out of the way. Um, I mean, Leon is probably really disappointed because he doesn't know who she is. Yeah. He ran He's all like, the way whatever. Downstairs yeah. For this, yeah so. that's, this isn't a spade key. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's Rebecca Chambers. The I don't know. People like her, people don't like her. I never really felt one way or the other because I never played as Chris in the first game. Because his was basically hard mode. Yeah. Almost to a fault. He got six inventory slots and Jill got eight. I, I, feel, like, I, I feel like the uh, Chris scene where he kisses his own bicep for an hour and a half. I don't know how I feel about that scene. Yeah. yeah I feel like that could have been cut. And see, he wasn't that alpha male in the first one. Like, he yeah. was just kind of like a guy. Gaming's changed since then. It has. Capcom's like, look what these American I mean, guys in, are buying. Even indicative of like that dark room scene. I mean, I clicked on the, the table, or the, the development table. It didn't be like it wasn't like. Do you want to use the film? It said I can probably develop film here, and then I had to pick the film from my inventory and use it. Yeah. So even that sort of thing, like not holding your hand as to what to do. Sure. Um, with what? Looks like that guy wants to hold your hand. He does. I think he wants to hold my hand. That's fine. Like I'm not. Where's the spade it. key at? I don't know. Cause you're you're getting wrecked by the spade key. That's like the eighth door. That's like. No, oh, I know. Hey, spade key or bus pal. I mean, this is like... I guess that big lobby in the... I do not like how the lobby spiders out. You know what I do? You know what I never thought of? And I feel like an idiot because everybody else who's ever played this game assuredly thought of it immediately. This is almost delightfully Metroidvania. It is, It's yeah. got a lot of, like, go here, backtrack, explore this, yeah. try this area. You know, it's it's very... That gameplay is... Part of what makes uh, that gameplay so great is how organic and free-roaming it feels. Yeah, and that's like at the heart of the series, which I feel like they just completely abandoned. Yeah. Which, I mean, some people like that, some people didn't. People who say... That, oh, good dodge, wow, good dodge, um, good dodge. People who say... Oh my god. Um, people who say that the series like was bad before Resident Evil 4 is like, objectively wrong. Um, just because they don't like the series for whatever reason, because sure. of that expiration, or because of... You know, <laughs> I love that pivot. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> the tank control no, pivot. No, no, Ooh. Um, oh, god yeah. almighty. All right, we're still fine, I think. We might, fine. Be, we might be yellow fine, but yeah. still fine. There's there, are there ever any zombies in the main part of the lobby? No. I don't the think so. the foyer? Yeah, here we go. This is, yeah, oh, get you. Scared the piss out of me when I was a kid. That will frighten you if you're a young lion. Oh, Especially get you. This, um, now it just looks awkward. Yeah. Looks um, like he's punching himself using their hand. Yeah, exactly. So that was a good little reversal of the dog scare. It's very um, clever. One of my favorite things about the remake, or not my favorite things, but one thing that's really funny is like the way that they remake a lot of things, but they also subvert other expectations. Um, they definitely do this part. The liquor is definitely still in here, by the way. Yeah, I was going to say this. Uh, um, you're going to get licked. Yeah, well, maybe not. Let's see if I'm still as handy with the shotgun as I used to be. Um, <laughs> dusting, dusting off the old, old catcher's mitt. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, I just wasted one shell. He's a tenacious fellow. I think we got him. Yeah? Down goes the liquor. He's quite dead. He's been licked. He's been licked. I used that joke a few times. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so we can use that to seal the shutters so the zombies can't get in. Oh, um, clever. But anyway, no, in the remake, the famous hallway that we, the, the dog jumps through the window, um, they do this thing where we're running through the hallway at the part where the dog would jump through. It just kind of hits the window and it splinters out. Yeah. And you're like, oh, wow, I'm glad that didn't happen. And then when you come back to the hallway, then it happens. So it was very like cleverly done. Yeah. I'm really really excited about the remake of that. Or not the remake, but the port of that. I That's guess. really all we can hope for for this series at this point, I think, is quality remakes. Yeah, I mean, 
I honestly wish that they would have done a remake style with this game. Yeah. I think it would have held up really well. Um, I I think this is my favorite of the first three. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I've got this one uh, in the. Uh, I don't know. I like the the series. It gets to the point where they're releasing like two or three a year. It feels like to where you just sort of give up on keeping up. Yeah. But like, uh, if we're just talking the core thing, and I I don't know, maybe Code Veronica gets a pass. But like, I feel like uh, four is just leagues ahead of all of them. This one is trailing by a mark a pretty good distance. One and three are probably close behind. Yeah. Not terribly far behind this one, and then after that, it's. The, the garbage. I feel like three or not three. Code Veronica is definitely um, worthy of being in the series, like being not being considered a side story because originally that was the third one, and then yeah. Nemesis was going to be the side story. Yep. But they decided to reverse that, and Code Veronica. I mean, it's very much a part of the original canon. It's got Claire and Chris, and just because it was on the Dreamcast, it kind of gets overlooked. But that's a really good game. I think. Did they port it? I, th I feel yeah, like it's been on a few, yeah. Part of PS2 and then eventually other consoles, but I feel like I've seen that on like every console of that era. Yeah, it's. Um, I definitely yeah. remember the Dreamcast one being the. Didn't mean to do that. Yeah, I mean it's it's really. Is that all your inventory slots? Yeah. That is miserable. Yeah, it's probably one of those atmospheric. Oh my God, I'm such an idiot. What'd you do? I completely forgot. I should have gone. Like I have that crest to put it in the fountain. Oh fool. Yeah, because Veronica's probably the most atmospheric of the original ones. I would say um, has the whole Antarctic. Like yeah, creepy isolation deal. Um, that's a cool. That's a, a cool thing. I'm always intrigued. You ever see those games that like? I feel like a lot of those games you've never heard of that you just see in the bargain bin at GameStop that are obviously bad, and blatantly adventure, awkward adventure games. Like yeah. those games always intrigue me. Yeah. Like the atmosphere. It's that they're obviously never well executed, but it's a it's always a good idea. So I second. One of the more underrated second. ones is the thing. Um, I mean, the thing video game. <laughs> yeah, the thing. Uh, the, uh, it takes place after the Kurt Russell movie, like almost immediately afterwards, and you're like some kind of cleanup team. And there's like this really weird trust mechanic with the squad that kind of plays off the game, like focusing on paranoia, or the, movie, the plot focusing on paranoia and all that. Yeah. Um, so I'm using this. Cuts that's a really weird. That's custom. gorgeous. Yeah. Here we have our spade key. I miss, the, I miss those little cutscenes oh, like yeah. that. This man's those little 3D. Just to prove it, it is indeed the spade key. <laughs> that opens up pretty much. I think you just beat the game. Yeah, pretty I much. think that's it. Yeah. Final boss. So, I think I go back through here. Yeah, I never really noticed that. I never really thought about the Metroidvania style of it. But yeah, like, it's definitely there. Because, Which especially nice. because, like, I mean, it doesn't like give you any direction. You can kind of go as you please. Yeah. Um, which the fourth one didn't really do. The fourth one almost feels... The fourth one's very linear. Yeah, it is. But because it, I think it has my favorite level design in the history of gaming, though. Just in Which general. Is, oh. all, all of it. Like yeah. at RE4, I could... If there were no enemies, and I could literally just carry Leon and Ashley through that game and just look at everything, yeah. I, would, I would do that. Like, it's just that gorgeous. And the environments are really varied, and I love the... Uh, that house is obviously like ludicrously huge. Oh yeah, that mansion. But God, it's so cool. Yeah, like it is. the idea. Like I, I get the. I guess I, I really get the feel for how big that mansion is. I'm awful at this. I need to just go ahead and get rid of these guys at some point. But survival horror, man. Time, yeah. You only got so many uh, bullets in the in the chamber there. Yeah. So um, this reminds me. I I own it. We we at some point need to break out. Uh, Rebreak out the Resident Evil deck building game. Oh, I agree. That's a fun little game. It is a good game. It wins the award for uh, most explicable game my wife enjoys. Really? Yeah. That's impressive. My wife really, like, straight up likes that it's game. It's a good game. She doesn't like any of that crap. Though. Yeah. Like, she doesn't like, I mean, she doesn't mind games. Right. But, like, she gets motion sickness, so video games doesn't, don't do it for her almost always, especially in first person. She just can't deal with it. Right. Um... And she's not a dork like like you or I. Yeah. So uh, imagine my surprise when I just purchased that, expecting it like most of the games I own, to give it one go and then for her to go, eh, this sucks. Okay, so this sucks. I don't remember. Past this point, I don't remember really what's Look going on. Look at that on. back off you just did. That was funny. Yeah. This seems like a really hard room. All these guys over. Um, luckily, I have the blood's in a heart shape. Yeah. <laughs> Who is that? This is Darius the Crow area. 
Um, is there anywhere in this game where like crows fly? Maybe I can't remember. I know they even four. So I, every, basically, of, every memory I have of four, I'm just projecting onto this game. I back myself into this hall. Uh oh. Not the smartest thing. You don't have a melee weapon either, do you? No, I put my I put my knife in the uh, into the bin. Yeah, this is a strategic. That's strategic. Uh, Maybe a point. I'm gonna try something here. You just going for the linebacker tactic? Yeah. That's pretty oh my God! Please don't die. Okay, hold. On. Oh God! Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. And they make you watch too. Yeah, it's very brutal. They tint his face red. He's dead. So my last save was way back before. That was way back. How are we on the clock here? We got 46 minutes. That's a pretty good LP. That's decent. Enough. That's a pr yeah. or a PP. Yeah. We, we PP'd. Yeah. It's a good little PP. A little dribble. Yeah. Sorry I was so terrible at the game. Oh, you did great. Yeah. You did great. Well, I guess we'll close this one out for now. Do you have, uh, we need we need a final pretentious thoughts on Resident Evil 2. Um, and it's difficult because Capcom's writers don't really know of any words that are more rare or long than the word because. Right. So... Um, if you can come up with any word more pretentious than like because or like thorough, you know, then you then you've pretty much earned a place in Capcom's writing staff. Right. So, um, um, verisimilitude. 